All right, happy last fourth. What? Yes, happy last fourth. Uh, well, happy potentially last fourth. So I know, is today actually the fourth or is today tomorrow. the... What's that? Tomorrow. Tomorrow's the fourth. Today's the third. So tomorrow, happy last fourth. Potentially last fourth. A uh, quick word of explanation, you were drinking Yingling, uh, the world's first best basic beer, and the boy won't shut up if his mama's not holding him, so now he can see her while she holds the camera. So, the last fourth. Is this really the last fourth of July? Now let me qualify that by saying, no, absolutely not. For hundreds of years, on the fourth of July, someone will throw a celebration and claim it's about the revelation, but really be aggrandizing them. Uh, if you, if you uh, pay, if you read anything about the Roman Empire, up until the 1400s, you know, right before Columbus discovers America, the Byzantine Empire is claiming to be the Roman Empire, and they're still like appointing consuls for the year and everything. Something that was central to the Roman Republic, literally 1500 years earlier. I can't remember. It was it was the time of Christ when the Republic died. It was before Christ when the Republic died. Uh, so it had been 1,500 years since the Roman Republic had actually been a thing and there were still people claiming to be the Roman Republic. So there'll be, for hundreds of years, there'll be people claiming to celebrate the 4th of July. But this may be our last actual 4th of July where we're celebrating the things of, of the revolution, of individual liberty, of freedom, of uh, limited government, and all those things uh, you know, that, that the founders embodied when, when they started throwing tea in the harbor and started shooting the legal authorities of the time. We always forget that. They were rebelling against the legal authorities of the time. So why is this the last fourth? Look, states like Texas are mandating masks, mandating that their people wear masks. There's tons of evidence out there that masks do nothing, that they, there's some evidence that they're even harmful, and yet the government is mandating masks. Not because the government thinks masks are important, but because the government's just part of the mass hysteria. Uh, there are there are people in charge who want control and they are winning uh, and this this COVID is, is a sign of it uh, I read somewhere and Mariah showed me this that so far nationwide the COVID death rate is about half that of the flu shot the flu shot has a higher death rate nationwide than COVID-19 does right now uh, and yet We've shut down the nation. You are heavy, boy. <laughs> We've shut down the nation. We're mandating masks. We're talking about this vaccine that, that you know will become mandatory, that they're rushing. Literally, they don't even deny that they're not rushing it through. Uh, but, you know, that's just COVID. I mean, let's look at all this other stuff. You know, the Supreme Court is nuts. John Roberts is like, well, it's wrong, but we've been doing it for 10 years now. That's literally what he just said in this, this abortion decision. It wasn't even 10 years. It was like five years ago or something when they, they decided a case. Five years later, he says, oh, that was wrong. We shouldn't have done that. But because we did, it's got to stand. What, what the hell is that all about? What, what kind of moral and mental midget says that that's the wrong thing to do, but we did it, so we can't change now? That is, that is insane. That is literal insanity, John Roberts. Now, maybe you're playing 3D chess and the rest of us are playing checkers, and there's something you're, I've heard all these explanations because everyone thought Roberts was a conservative. At the end of the day, he struck down the laws of a state with powers that are nowhere enumerated in the Constitution that is, is there any idea that the Supreme Court could strike down the laws of a state uh, because he said well we've been doing it anyway that that was the the explanation they used for slavery in some cases well we don't like it but we've been doing it let's leave it's bullshit utter bullshit uh, and, and well, I mean we could go on and on and on and on you guys watch the news but things have gotten to the point the the, the hordes are winning. Uh, there's no other way to put it. They are winning. They, uh, there's a small amount of them. There's not a whole lot of them, but they are winning. They are controlling the narrative. Uh, they are getting all the oxygen. Their issues are the ones that everyone is, is the baseline. The baseline right now is, oh my God, holy hell, change the world. Turn it into a socialist hellhole. And that's the baseline. And there's some people who don't want it to be quite as much of a socialist hellhole. And there's people that want to go all the way and have it be revolutionary France. Uh, but the baseline is socialist hellhole. And the separation of powers, uh, federalism, uh, 
states' rights, these things are dead. They're dead and gone. Uh, and they were central, central, the hallmark of our, of our nation. They were a part of what 1776 was all about. Uh, and 1789, when the Constitution was put through, we forget. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, uh, I'm going to take some heat for this. As I've gotten older, you know, there were, you've all heard about the Federalist Papers. Those are the people who were pushing the Constitution. Because when the Constitutional Convention was called, you know, all, all they were supposed to do was sort of strengthen the Articles of Confederation. Articles of Confederation. I think that was it. Uh, they weren't supposed to do a whole new form of government. They just did it, and no one blinked when they did. And there was this big debate between the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. And the Federalists supported the Constitution, and the Anti-Federalists thought it was a really bad idea. And as I've gotten older, and as I've seen what's happened, the Anti-Federalists were right. Uh, everything, much of what they said about the Constitution ended up being true. It would turn, became, it, it eventually became a tool used to abrogate our liberties uh, rather than protect them. Uh, and now people will say all kinds of things about how the Constitution mandates that they have to control weapons even though the Second Amendment supposedly shall not be infringed. You know, they, they blanket all this stuff in the Constitution. Uh, the fact that we live in a nation where people are willing to lie like that, just be that, yeah, he agrees, be that deceptive, and none of us are, are calling them out on it, or, or there's no there's no fallout for them to, to look us in the eye and say, yes, shall not be infringed, but these infringements are constitutional. And we, and we, we buy it. And I know we don't have a whole lot of choice at the moment, but so many people buy it. Uh, I feel like this could be the last fourth. I mean, we've, we've come to the point where the next step is the total collapse of, of anything even remotely resembling what our founders set out to accomplish. Um, let's see if he won't fuss if he stands, because he is heavy. So will next year somebody be saying Happy Fourth of July and will there be fireworks? Maybe not. They're, they're really trying to break us from those traditions. You know, they're, they're outlawing fireworks everywhere, even in conservative states like Texas and Georgia and Alabama and South Carolina and Montana and out west and, and whatnot. Uh, the crazies are in control. The inmates are running the asylum. And they are winning. Uh, so this could be it. Uh, this could be the end of, of anything even, even remotely resembling what we thought we were. And let's face it, it's been dying for a long time. So I can't, I can't say Happy Fourth of July, man. I can't. Uh, I am almost in mourning for what's been lost. Deep, deep mourning. You know, you saw that baby boy. That's my youngest son right now. Please God, maybe another one. It's up to him. God opens and closes the womb. I have seven sons and seven daughters, and uh, I have one grandson. And and what they're going to deal with, what they have to live through, uh, especially as Christ followers, as people who believe in the Bible and want to live their lives that way. I I am I weep almost. I am mourning for what they're going to face and how difficult it's going to be for them to practice their faith and live their lives in, in peace with their God and in harmony with their ancestors. That, that sounds like some kind of crazy Shinto stuff. I'm not saying, you know, there's not like no ancestor worship here, but, but our forefathers set in place a way of life that I want them to live in and be a part of, and I'm not sure they're going to be, no, I'm sorry, I'm pretty sure they're not going to be able to without having to go through some severe hardships. So that, that is, here we go, is this the last fourth? If it's not, it's the penultimate fourth. It's, it's getting close, man. I, you know, anything could happen, please God. But, but if things go on their current trajectory, I, I don't know what's next, what happens next. They're not showing any signs of slowing down. They've accomplished every goal they've set for themselves to this point. Now they're, now, now they're like the dog who's caught the car. He doesn't know what the hell to do with it. But they're going to do something. And, and what's left for them to take? What's left for them to destroy, turn down, or uh, tear down, burn? I don't care that much about Confederate statues. I mean, I don't like them just tearing them down for no reason. I think there's a process to be gone through. But if a community has changed, and the people in that community now have a Confederate monument that they don't want, they have every right to change those monuments. You know, that's local control. That's, that's their, their right. I don't care that much that they're tearing down monuments, you know. Boy, hold on a second. Sorry. Control yourself. Okay. Six of my seven sons are extremely well behaved and well trained. This one is not, because he was sick about six months ago, seven, eight months ago. He was in the hospital for a week with his mother. 
they ate each other, this parasitic relationship evolved, and I have not been able to break him, so, him of it yet. Because I'm old, I'm a grandfather, I'm not really in daddy mode anymore. But for his sake, I've got to get a handle on him. Because if he's, <laughs> if he's disciplined, undisciplined and weak now, how is he going to be strong and disciplined later? But that's neither here nor there. So, I can't say happy 4th of July, men. All I can say is, uh, raise a glass? No, not raise a glass. Uh, whatever. Last 4th, possibly. Penultimate 4th. We'll find out, men. Thank you. We appreciate you.